No gas. No gas today. I don't know. There was a temporary peak in 1973. Uh, Middle Eastern OPEC countries were angry about the 1973 war in Israel, uh, and they embargoed the, the oil. And we immediately had panic for the future of our way of life and mile-long lines at gas stations. In the future, things like driving cars and air travel period will be not something that the average person can afford, but something that's only available to the, the super, super elite, the one-tenth of one percent. A, a graduate student came to see me and he said, tell me, will my grandchildren ever ride in an airplane? It, it, it was a gripping question because the answer might very well be no. say air travel will substantially stop. Many people came to think that it was all money that made the world go round when in reality it was the underlying supply of cheap energy, much of it coming from oil. You end up with asking, what is more real? Is it the financial market or is it the oil supply in the ground? And everybody will come to the conclusion, what is more real is the oil supply in the ground. The financial system is a system full of petrodollars, and if you take them out, it's bound to shrink. There isn't a company quoted on the stock exchange that doesn't tacitly assume a business as usual supply of cheap oil. Well, that isn't there anymore. That means that virtually every company is, is overvalued on the stock exchange. And as the financial community recognizes this, well, that might trigger some kind of overreaction and, and stock market collapse. I think it's very likely. I wouldn't be surprised personally if it doesn't trigger a, another Great Depression comparable to the one of the 1930s, if not worse, because this one is imposed by nature rather than being a speculative bubble. I've taken this time span here from 5,000 years ago to the present to 5,000 years in the future. Now, what we call recorded history began about 5,000 years ago. So what this shows is that this Washington Monument-like spike here is the episode of the fossil fuels, coal, oil, and natural gas, and every other kind of fossil fuel in human history. Mm. It's the most disturbing thing that's ever happened to the human species. It's responsible for our technological society, and in terms of human history, it's a very brief epoch. At the time of Christ, there were about 300 million people on the planet, which had somehow about doubled by the end of the 18th century when coal came on, then came good old oil, and suddenly the population went up six times. I don't think that we could sustain the present population of the globe, much less what it will be in 20 or 30 years. Uh, without the use of petrochemicals. Does it mean we've got to go back to a population not much different from what it was before oil? In the absence of fossil fuels, how many people can the world support? Many people believe maybe a billion and a half, two billion people. You don't often hope you're wrong. I really hope I'm wrong. Everybody I know who's concerned about peak oil hopes they're wrong. I don't think I'm wrong. I don't think they're wrong.
facing some sort of unprecedented, unparalleled situation, and that explains why it is so difficult one to, to really accept it. One thinks there's got to be a solution. It's somehow contrary to our mindset to, to think about these things. We just don't like to do it. We, we've got used to the filling station has been there for as long as we can remember, and normal people say, well, it's going to be there into the future. It's, it's very hard, and it's doubly hard because it really has never happened before. It's a strange issue of mindset and attitude and experience and behavior that somehow leaves us so unprepared for this situation. We identify a species called hydrocarbon man who lives on the strength of all of this oil. Well, his days are definitely numbered. Whether mankind or Homo sapiens as a species altogether will carry on living some different, simple way, that's another question. Right now, we don't have the kind of political leadership, I don't mean only we in the United States, I mean the whole world doesn't have the kind of political leadership that would make us uh, aware of this problem and, and do something about it. There's little hope of the politicians taking the lead in this, because it's difficult in, 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 in government for people to, it's much easier for a politician to react to a crisis when it's happened than to take steps to prepare for it. It's only when the public calls their representatives in Congress and says, you must do something, and we, pre we are prepared to support you in whatever actions you take. You don't have those telephone calls being made today. <laughs>